because I believe it's a word of exhortation. Just a quick one. Those of you who have issues with people, who have issues with what somebody did, what they said, what they didn't do, what they didn't say, what they neglected, what they forgot, what they abandoned, whatever. Ask God to give you the ability to forgive. Now, there are some things that are basically or humanly impossible to forgive. But you're coming out of 2023 and you're moving into another period of time. Don't carry old baggage from last year or from this year to next year. Don't do that because it's not going to short circuit anybody else but you. The only one that's going to pay dues for carrying bitterness, for allowing unforgiveness, for allowing resentment to abide in one's heart is you. Not the person you're angry with. They're going to tiptoe through the tulips and go do their thing because they're probably not giving you a second thought. While you are bogged down, weighted down with this ball and chain around your neck that's got their name on it, they're doing their thing. And you can't move forward as long as you have that weight on you. You cannot rise to higher levels as long as you have that kind of mess weighing you down. Don't let anybody have that kind of power over you. Forgive. Now, for those of you who have a level or an, an offense that's unforgivable, that means not easy for the human spirit to do. You're going to have to do the one thing that you may not even want to do. You're going to have to ask God to help you forgive. You may not want to forgive. That's okay. God knows it. But be honest and confess that you don't want to forgive. You hear me? This is that quick word of exhortation. We haven't gotten into the message yet, but I just had, I felt like I needed to share this. It's been on me all morning. Some of you need to ask God for his supernatural power to enable you to forgive the unforgivable. You hear me? And you will find a freedom you will find that that weight that's been weighing you down, bogging you down, binding you, tying you up in knots is gone. Freedom is a wonderful thing, y'all. Don't let any booger, don't let any monkey, don't let anybody stop that show. Because freedom is your right as long as you're a child of God, as long as you're born again. Freedom is your right. Don't let anybody any circumstance, anything, any emotion, or any memory steal you of your joy and freedom. Don't let anybody disturb your peace. Nobody's worth it. So that's what I want to say to you. Ask God to enable you to forgive. That's something you must do because tomorrow's not promised, let alone 2024. And if tomorrow's not promised and you're moving from now to then and you wake up in eternity with all that crap in your heart, you know what the Bible says? If you don't forgive them, I will not forgive you. So you can call on Jesus' name till the cows come home. But you better get rid of that unforgiveness. And I really feel like it's more of an admonishment and a warning more than an exhortation. You need to get rid of the unforgiveness. It will do nothing but hurt you. Amen? All right. Happy New Year, everybody. Let's change the subject and put a little light on the matter now. We're going to go to a nice light atmosphere, and we're going to read Matthew chapter 5. And this is for those of you who seem like, it just seems like life seems to kick you in the face, kick you in the booty, kick you in the gut. And you might have had a very difficult time in 2023. You might have had a difficult time for the majority of your life. 
but you serve a risen Savior. And for those of you who have not accepted that risen Savior, whose name is Jesus Christ, you need to. Because this is, this is what life is like, living without him in your life. Zero degrees outside, the elements, cold, the wind is whipping, the, the lightning is roaring, the, the snow is, is hitting everybody in the face like little needles prickling all over you because of the wind. You're in a blizzard, but you're out there in your underwear. You're out there in your socks. You're out there with a t-shirt. That's living life without Jesus. That's exactly what it's like. You feel everything that's going on out there because you're not covered. You're not dressed for the elements. Mm -hmm. I want to share with you what living life for Jesus is like. Because a lot of you think it's a bunch of do's and don'ts. What you don't know is how beautiful God is. What a beautiful covering his love is. How beautiful life can be with his peace. How much easier the difficult times can be when he's all in the mix with you. Emmanuel means God with us. If you think of John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word. We're not talking the Bible. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, who is the Word? The Word is Jesus Christ. And it goes on down to talk about how he came into the world and the world received him not how he became flesh and dwelt among us as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth check it out y'all jesus is god the son you hear me so for you not to accept jesus in your heart you're literally rejecting god himself and for you to reject god is like going out in the blizzard in your undies now, how stupid is that? I don't mean to be rude, but, you know, folks who stuck on stupid, they stuck on stupid. Anybody who will go out in the winter in their underwear, that's, that's, there's something's wrong up here. Something's missing. Some marbles out of place. Something's going on. Because you're going to be sick. You're going to get pneumonia. Something's going to go wrong being out there too long in that cold air in the elements. That's the same way it happens in this world. This world will kick you in the teeth. Worldliness will bring you down. Worldliness will strip you of your God-given dignity. Worldliness will take away your destiny, will rob, steal, destroy you over time. You've got to have Jesus in your heart. Don't go into this new year without him. Don't go anywhere without him. You hear me? All right. Now we're going to read Matthew. Wow. I'm going the way I'm feeling the flow. So if it sounds disjointed, understand God's got a reason. Somebody's listening that needs to hear that. So moving right along. All right. Now we're going to read Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 through when God says to stop. <laughs> you know how I roll on that. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was sat, his disciples came unto him. Let me stop right now. I just got to say this. I feel so much love for God right now. And I hope and pray that, that you hear it, that you feel his presence as I read his word. There's nothing more beautiful on this planet than God, you guys. There's nothing more beautiful than his presence, his supernatural love, his divine peace. Okay, let me stop. Let me, let me get back to the word. I just, I just had to give him glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now that I'm looking good and ugly, let's go on and read. Verse 2. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. See, what this is saying is no matter what your condition is in life, no matter how many downfalls, pitfalls, how many setbacks, how many cancellations, and whew, no matter how many bad things have happened in your life, God is the answer to it. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. There's an answer for all of it. Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger. And thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. Not they might be filled. They shall. And they ain't going to be half full. They're going to be filled. Full baby. Hmm. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. That's one of the reasons why you want to be a forgiving soul. Because the more merciful you are to others, the more merciful you more mercy you get from God. Woo! Ask me how I know. All right. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When have you ever looked at a glass of water? You hold up a glass, you just get through washing it, drying it, it's all crystal clear, and then you pour a nice glass of water in it. I mean, you 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 you, uh, you fill it up with water, and you hold it up to the light, and it looks so beautiful because you can see right through the water. You can see right through the glass, like going to the beach and looking at clean water. You can see the little clams at the bottom. It's just so beautiful when you can see through water. That's the way it is in your spirit. When your spirit is pure, you can see through. It's it's it, light shines through you brilliantly. You're honest with yourself. You're honest with God. And when you're honest with God, you get to see him because he acknowledges that honesty, that purity, that genuineness. He honors that. And as a result, he manifests himself to you because you can see clearly. You can see him because you're not looking at him through a murky heart. You're not looking at him through a murky, fouled up spirit. You're looking at him through pure eyes. Oh, I just love that about God. All right. So listen, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. God is all about peace, y'all. When he's about war, that's because he's getting ready to get down and do some judgment. But he is a peace giver. And Jesus is our Prince of Peace. You can't have Jesus without peace. You can't have peace without Jesus. They go hand in hand. So uh, oh, uh, let me get myself together here. What I'm trying to say is when you make peace, when you help people reconcile, when you take a volatile situation and speak peace to it and calm it down, Guess what? You know you're a child of God. Mm. For they shall be called the children of God. 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You have no idea the times when you have suffered because of your faith. You have been mistreated. You have been dealt low blows on your job, passed up, cheated out of, out of what you deserved because you put your heart in your work. But they, they throw dirt on everything you do because they don't like the Jesus you serve. God has rewards for you, baby. You can't even imagine, not only in the by and by, but right here in the land of the living, God has rewards for you. So no matter what they do to you, God's got the upper hand. Always remember that. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom rules, baby. Kingdom has authority. Kingdom has power. Anyway, let me move right along. All right. 
11, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Folks are going to lie on you. Folks are going to falsely accuse you, dirty up your little uh, reputation. They're going to do whatever they can to shortchange you from what's rightfully yours. Shortchange you from other people admiring and respecting you. They're going to try to do their best. But guess what? God knows how to shut the mouth of a lion. As you see what happened to Daniel in the lion's den. God shut the mouths of the lion. When people want to devour you, chew you up and spit you up, spit you out. God knows how to give them lockjaw. God's got you covered, baby. If God be for you, who can be against you? Amen? All right. You ask why I serve my risen Savior. Oh, yeah, I'd be a, an idiot not to, knowing all the blessings he put in my life. All right, let's see here. 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets, which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under feet. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Now I'm going to stop there and, and go to 16 real quick and then I'm going to stop. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven so your good works are not to get you saved your good works are to glorify your father which is in heaven your good works is what gets you rewards your good works is what brings god closer to you because he said if they love me they will obey my commandments hmm think about that so what I want to say to you, when you serve God, you got Jesus in your heart. If you got Jesus in your heart, you constantly ask for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. He gives you the power to do what you can't do humanly. So he's got the whole deck stacked in your favor. You've got all kind of reinforcements, heavenly reinforcements, supernatural reinforcements. He'll take you from zero to 60 in a split second when you can't even get there in your car and that, that, that fast. And you're just walking on your feet. Why? Because God can take you to levels that you can't get to on your own. That's the kind of supernatural help. That's what he means when he says he is a very present help. Hmm. So <clears throat> know who you serve. Trust him. Don't doubt him. Trust him. I don't care what's going on in this world. They talk about nukes. We were talking about that earlier. They talk about nukes over here, nukes over there, nukes everywhere. Guess what? Lord, send your angels and neutralize the nukes. Put them to sleep. De disconnect whatever charge there is that can make it blow up and hurt people. Mm -hmm. Neutralize them. The folks that are trying to bring them in the country, let it blow up on them in the ocean where it can't hurt anybody else but them. Let their tactics blow up in their faces. Everybody that has these little schemes, that's the kind of prayer that you pray. Save them or get rid of them. But don't let all these people get hurt because of their nonsense. Cancel it. Cancel the assignment of the enemy against God's people in the name of Jesus. And you constantly lean on God. You constantly ask God and acknowledge him in all your ways. He will direct your path. He is for you, not against you. Remember that. Jeremiah 29. Remember that. He is for you, not against you. He knows the plans he has for you. Plans to bless you, not harm you. Not unless you choose to be his enemy or the enemy of his people. Be careful with that. All right. <clears throat> so this is not going to be a long message. I just want to share with you. If you're in mourning, God's got the comfort you need. If you're hurting, God's got the healing you need. 
Mm-mm-mm. Remember that old song? There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. <clears throat> and there's another one. Come ye disconsolate, ere ye languish, come to the mercy seat, fervently kneel. Here bring your wounded heart, here bring your sorrows. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. God can heal it all. You got issues with people. You got issues with <clears throat> bitter memories. You got issues with a broken heart. You've had so many people lie to you, disappoint you, mm, fall through on their promises. God wants to prove how faithful, how true he is. Don't treat him the way they treated you. Find him for yourself. Get to know him for yourself. And you will find he will take you to a whole new world with new horizons to pursue. No one to tell us no <clears throat> or where to go or say you're only dreaming. That's right. God will make your dreams come true. God will shine a light in your pathway no matter how dark it is. Look for his light. Ask for it. You'll be surprised the ways, the methods he uses to intervene, to bring you help, to rescue you, to make a way where there is no way to provide for you. Bless and heal you. He will make you whole. You feel like a fragmented soul. You've been abused all your childhood. God will remove every scar. But you must ask. Seek him for everything you know you need. Acknowledge him. Be honest about your needs. Don't be too proud to say I'm toe up from the flow up, Lord. Help me. Make me whole. The potter wants to put you back together again. And I'm going to close with that. God bless you. God keep you. God cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. That, that's the condensed version. But be at peace. Seek him with all your heart. You understand that when you seek him, <clears throat> he is faithful and just. He will not only forgive you for your sins, He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And those that diligently seek him will find him when you seek him with all your heart. Seek him. This is that time. And I'm going to quote 2 Chronicles 7.14. And that's the closing quote for this message. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. Not apologize now. This past two cents, don't just apologize. Turn from it. That's true repentance. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. Their land is all inclusive. Your mind, your heart, your territory, your destiny. Heal your land. Go to God, seek him, turn from your wicked ways and see what he will do in your life. Amen. God bless us as we move on to 2024. Amen. God bless you.